That's it. Welcome along to the Friday Huddle. Some call it the Judd Cave. I like to call it the house that Beck built. But we are here and we are ready to fire. A couple of big games coming your way. Port Adelaide versus the Western Bulldogs. And we'll speak to a legend from Port Adelaide. Greg Phillips will join us. And then North Melbourne take on Frio over in Perth. They've got COVID issues, but we are at the Judd Cave. The Chief is out. We've got a new inclusion, which we'll get to in a moment. There is tennis being played in the last hour or so. The boys are fired up and ready to go. And as always, the captain as the team is here. Hello, Darce. How are you? Uh, how are you? I couldn't be any better. It's always a very special night to, uh, to be invited into the, uh, the Judd household. And I um, full of anticipation, I'd describe uh, how I feel. How are you? The- been some interesting things happen already. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing setup here. We were lucky enough to have a shower after tennis, and uh, I was washing myself. I have soap at my house. I was washing myself with Cool Mint Whip Shower Foam with Kakadu Plum and Finger Lime. And that I like, was what I was using to wash myself. Now, now who has that type of And gear? I like the fact that all six of us were able to shower at the one time, Howie, in separate bathrooms. In separate bathrooms with no water issues. So the Whip Shower Foam with Kakadu Plum and Finger Lime has me smelling a treat. And here he is, Captain Shiny himself, Nate Brown's here. Hello. We all showered at the same time, Duke, but we all couldn't have gotten the pool at the same time because <laughs> it's this extraordinary small. But you might remember the first Judd Cave we did was at Juddy's office in South Melbourne. We didn't know what it was because it didn't have light globes, it didn't have no. any seats. I drove past it today. Yes. A big four lease sign up. Uh, so it's no longer, and uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. And Damo is here with some news out of the West Coast, but. Uh, Impressive on the tennis court too. I thought the man in black all decked out in the Nike gear. Hello to you, Damo. I don't think so, Howie. Uh, I let my uh, partner down, Nathan Brown, uh, with my serve. But But, uh, uh, I had a good time. The reason we are here is because the Chief has been trailing off a bit over the last couple of weeks. I think it would be fair to say. He doesn't look in great, Nick Chief. No, (laughs) Um, he doesn't. Probably won't get through the year, I wouldn't have thought. So we've got a backup just in case his name is Chris. He lives in the house that Beck built. <laughs> and it is nice to see you, Judge Juddy. Great to see you, Guru. And you got to marry well. There's no shame in that. <laughs> and uh, very good to be back on the air with you, gentlemen. And commiserations. You know, Duke was involved in, obviously, the winning team along with myself and Chief. And we came, we saw, we conquered. And uh, I guess what happened should have happened, Duke. Yeah, there was some disappointing uh, outcomes as well across the afternoon, it's fair to say. So we had a... A, a tennis tournament at the Judd uh, household. Brownie gave himself the number one seed, fair to say, he, he, did. Yeah, he did, and he selected the court. You could have played on hard court, on grass, or on clay, but you chose the hard court, <laughs> and, and you played well. Uh, I didn't play that well. I was very... The, Chris is good at football. Chris is good at a lot of things. He's talented. He's, he thinks he's good looking. He's married well. He's got a nice house. And I come in here and I wanted him to be bad at tennis. I genuinely wanted him to be bad. Fair to say we all wanted that. Well, I, wanted it, I wanted the TV juddy out there. But unfortunately, he's very good at tennis. His work rate from the back of the court to the front of the court and closing down the net. His speed there was brilliant. And I was a touch unnerved by his beautiful wife, Beck, who looked out in the court and suggested that I needed to follow through more <laughs> on my forehand, which threw me a little bit. But uh, how, how are you feeling about your performance out there? Listen, I'd be fair to say it was probably 15 years between drinks and I performed at the level I expected to perform at. Some things you're good at, some things you're not so good at. Oh, my second what are you good at? Yeah. Um, you yeah, keep showing up, Howard. That's what I like about you. I just keep turning up. Oh, it was <laughs> fun, though. It was fun. I think I was better. I, I would have chosen the clay court out the far back, but <laughs> we had to play on this. But it was good fun. Um, Nath, you're the tennis expert. Um, Do you know what I love? Because we actually have got a little bit of um, how he managed to get a bit of name dropping <laughs> into our our match. So we have got some live audio. Is there some vision we? as well, uh, Snor? We have a listen to this. I know self confidence isn't an issue. He's come ready to play, Howie. You got a good feeling or not? Yeah, I haven't played for 15 years, but I did do a podcast with Tanasi Kokonakis this week and got Another some name tips. Drop. Yeah. Another name drop. <laughs> I'm sure Tanasi helped you out there today, uh, Howie. No, and, you catch that on the Howie Games next week, though. And, and wore the Howie Games. Yeah, had the Howie Games. Yeah. On. Uh, yeah. uh, Nate, before we get to some more audio, you, you're, you're, well, you know, beat Peter Luchak. I, I expected more from you, to be honest, Nate, but you're the tennis expert, so just run your eye over the group as a whole. Firstly, the, the big fellow whose temper was kept in check today. <laughs> well, I played against Duke. Uh, many times, uh, many years ago, and I thought you were sharp tonight, Duke. I thought you came, you were very good. Your backcourt game was good. I thought your serve, which was uh, like years ago, was terrible. Sometimes you couldn't <laughs> hardly hit it, and you, you get upset, and you throw your racket, True. but tonight your serving was outstanding. How did you feel? You felt went? like I was let down by my first partner. Um, that was me. That was Howie. Who, um, <laughs> he'll find his thing. I mean, ball sports aren't for Howie. We've worked that out. I mean, I'm sure if we 
you know, two or three foot swell on a boogie board, how he's <laughs> going to come into his own. And I say that sincerely. So that threw me a little bit, having to carry, carry Howie. But came good in the final, I thought. And you blokes definitely had a blow up at the start. Yours, yours, yours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't touch the ball in the first two games and they were my best two games, I thought, when I wasn't required. I think some of the vision's on Triple M Footy Instagram now. And what about Damo? There was always concerns about coming in for the 54-year-old, but I thought he got through okay. 51. I thought he was okay. He chose me as the number one seed, so I got him as my doubles partner. And his backcourt game was good. His serve game needs a little bit of work. A but lot of work. He had a crack. He had a crack. And that's all we are. He surprised us, sir, yeah, he did. big time. He did. Big time. Had a bit of touch around the net. He did. <laughs> he came in as the number six seed, and I felt like he was probably, at the end of the day, the number four seed. I okay. felt the bright lights of the serve really did sort him out. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for <laughs> pumping up Damo, but when push came to shove and Nate needed a bit of help. <laughs> you know what? You know what I was disappointed with was the Chief. Yeah. I've yeah. played tennis with him a lot, the Chief, and I just felt like... He got here, and he's a big game player. We know that, except the 87 grand final where he pulled out. <laughs> but yeah. he's a four-time premiership player, the Chief, and he gets the job done. But I thought when he come here and he's in Brighton, all of a sudden he had to get out of his little apartment over there in the South Bank, and he saw Juddy, who's a two-time Brownlow medalist. Do you reckon Juddy spooked him today? I thought Juddy yeah. spooked him. I've never seen Chief hit it off the frame as much as he did today. Well, well, Brownie, the other thing too that was noticeable about the Chief, when the first few shots were not going the way he wanted them to, he, he started referring to the wind. Mm. <laughs> he he yep. said, I normally play indoors. He said, I normally indoor play yeah. indoors. And indoor oh, yeah. He said, the wind's got me. Yeah. I've never seen a man make more excuses in my life <laughs> and than he's the a, Chief did tonight. He's pretty much a full-time tennis pro, Chief. That's what he spends <laughs> his whole life doing. Three <laughs> times a week from 12.30 at the tennis to center. at the tennis centre. So that's... Well, Six hours worth of tennis a week. On that basis, he's embarrassing today, Chief. <laughs> he let himself down, Howie. Yeah, well, the Chief is not here, but Judd played very, very well. Uh, home court advantage. Yeah, home, Let's not home, get too carried. It's not about me, Howie. It's not about me. Well, it's not about me. Funny thing is, working with you in the past sometimes always seems to be about you. Um, Do we need to go through the amount of injections you appear to have had today, yeah. Howard? You're yeah, no, covered I, in band-aids yeah, and I all sorts of a, coming with your ankle strap. Which I was... didn't have as many injections as we lost tennis balls to your neighbours. No, yeah. okay. We'll get through your medical history. Was that later, a pre-tennis? Uh, a lot of cortisones today, Howard. Yeah, Let's take you through it. A few cortisones today. I got one in my Achilles. I got one in my elbows. So, What's happened to you, mate? You're falling <laughs> well, apart yeah, now. I'm falling apart. I'm falling is it the fact that you don't consume any food? Is that finally caught up? A bit of protein would help. No. Yeah, the doc is coming, so you can ask him later on. Well, he's doc, normally doc quite coming. risk averse. The doc, so why is yeah. he putting pins in you? Well, he, I asked him for three, and he was risk averse. He said only put two in, but no, one in the Achilles, one in the uh, an elbow, and we'll we'll be good. You're going to gonna be okay with the doc being here, Jerk? Yeah, obviously. Oh, well, well, no, that's, 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 that's mm. uh, Doc was Ooh. concerned because he wanted to ask if the <laughs> anti vaxxer was appearing tonight. <laughs> said, yes, hey, be, be very, hey, be dust very dust careful be, yeah. uh, landing that because and the people need to understand come in full PP outfit. <laughs> the art of good medicine is collaboration. So <laughs> Doc and I collaborate. We, we occasionally, um, you know, differ on different things. Did he refer like, to you as a doctor? Or he, well, he, well and, uh, Das is, is a very well-researched well, well man in I, this field. I, I think my credentials on the House of Wellness stand for himself, <laughs> Howie. So, uh, Doc can have his medical degree. I mean, that's not a hard thing to do. You try and host a wellbeing show, Howie. And See if you don't need to be across some knowledge on that. So, I'll go toe-to-toe with Doc again tonight. Well, I okay. saw you. I went to the toilet last time for two minutes, came back and, and you... Departed, uh, oh, still on golf. So, um, Jody, have you got your acupuncture needles? Because that they were produced last time. I'm ready time. to go. I mean, that's that's just a bit disappointed how it got the quarter zone because I could fix that up with 15 minutes or so of, uh, of the dry needles. How we can sort that out? I'm not sure. What else are you cooking up over there, noodles? Have you got anything to say or not? No, not at the moment. I've got something <laughs> coming, coming up after the break. He's on his iPad. He's drifted onto his iPad all week already. I've just found something out. I mean, the things don't go to plan always, but uh, we'll do that after Have the break. Have you noticed something okay. different about... Uh, no, you haven't seen him for a while, Juddy. Well, his radio craft improved, though, isn't it? No. It's a bit of a hook. It's a bit of a hook <laughs> for the break. Hook? I like that. Have you noticed Maybe that his <laughs> face doesn't move a lot these Very days? Very shiny. Juddy. What is that? Yeah. It's beautiful just forehead. It's just yeah. I promise you, you can't stop looking at him. Once, <laughs> once you see the forehead, not moving. Yeah. There is no <laughs> Got to see when you're winning, Nate. Got to see when you're winning. We might take a break here. Nate has got a big breaking story coming up <laughs> next. Oh. A couple of media oh. heavyweights going toe to toe in a commentary Ooh. box. Someone in the box is what I'm being told. We're at the Judd Cave, living up to Port Adelaide versus the Dogs. There is vision of the tennis affair on Triple M Footy's Instagram page right now. Mark out with you, Damian Barrett, Nathan Brown, Chris Judd himself, and Luke Darcy. 
Uh, we'll get some news from you, Damo, shortly about what's happening in Western Australia. But first, uh, Nate, you've got a couple of things up your sleeve. Well, it's, it's not an easy gig, this media gig, is it, Damo? There's a lot of personalities, there's a lot of networks. So even on your network, as an example, Howie, yep. um, you've got the Chiefs show, you've got your show, yep. so there's a bit of animosity. There's and no there's animosity. a couple of other shows where people might be upset about who's doing those shows and sitting in the seats when people aren't there. Yes. So, so you're you saying know. there's a bit of ego in our industry oh, and no. people get their nose out. I find Ab- that hard to believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you've got to be elite to cut it and that's why our man Judge is now dealing with cryptocurrency. So there's problems on Fox. <laughs> there's even no problems at Fox. Our show, the Sunday footy show. We had, what, we had an issue friction two weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. which you had to cover off twice with TJ couple of phone calls. So, I mean, these things happen everywhere. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. I'm just interested in a couple of phone calls to TJ. Damo, what happened? Well, unlike the others on the, on the show, I do care for people's <laughs> well-being beyond the show itself. What and happened? We had a few fractious moments what on this. What was the issue? Oh, there was nothing. I can't remember. What, what was it, actually? I actually forget the origins of it. It was over oh, some tennis pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was a, a look at TJ's <laughs> pronouncing of various tennis names. And, and it he might turned have gone it up, TJ, did he? It might have gone too long. And he wasn't yeah. happy. He wasn't happy, yeah. So but you t- rang to smooth it over? I Twice. did, yeah, I did. Right. Terry Wallace. Wallace. But that's not what we're <laughs> anyway, talking about. No, is this about okay. me? Yeah, no, that's not what we're talking about. Because last week, up in Cairns, it was hot and it was humid mm, right. when they go to Cairns. And our man, Duke, was up there, was up there with seven, wasn't he? And you know, he likes to be organised the Duke. He likes to be way, really organised. And <laughs> you know that he's got swampy stats in front of yeah, him. Of so course. when he's got swampy stats, he's okay. But you're out of your comfort zone because it is in Cairns. There's no air conditioning in the box. Nope. So we know oh, he's... I this, know where this is coming from the, now. He, you want know, to be accurate with this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> we know he's the silver spoon from Ross Trevor, Ross Trevor College. So, and he would have got the bags rolled to the from the car <laughs> to the airport check-in. Didn't carry yeah. his own How bags. else do they get yeah. there, Dan? Some would ask. So... They've got issues before the game. So the communications go down. There's no <laughs> stats whatsoever. Oh, no. no stats. Nobody <laughs> down on the boundary. So no, you can't no. even talk to the person down on the Should boundary. Just be flexible when you go with it, Brown. our yeah. man doesn't deal well with. So all he's <laughs> no. thinking is, okay, I'm okay. I've got swampy stats yes. right in front of me. <laughs> I'm ready to go. All of a sudden, the producer, Marky Carlin, comes over and puts a coffee oh, he's just in front, of, in front of Duke. And the coffee... In Duke's defence, it was full to the brim. Like, if, if you tried to pick this coffee up, it would have actually spilled just by touching it. Now, I, I don't want to go inside your head, Duke, but I would have thought Duke's thinking at that point, looking at it going, I'm not sure who would put a coffee that full in front of anybody, let alone near all this equipment. Anyway, so the game's going on. Hamish McLaughlin's calling. You've got Dars and you've got Richo. And Hames calling. At this point, still, there's no stats. There is no communication down to the boundary. But he's got swamp stuff. He's, he's got, got swamp he's got, stuff. Okay, yep. So, as you know, when things aren't working well or Ash's computer's not working well, the producers, they come in. They come in and they take the computer. So, the producer came in and at the same time, Hame is calling at this point. Hands the computer. So, he tries to get the computer out. And what he didn't oh, realise no. was there was a cord attached to the computer. Oh, no. <laughs> Which is actually then the long story. This one <laughs> pulled the coffee. It's a good oh. build up. All over Duke. Yep. All over, over Duke. The, the Peter Jackson suit. The Peter Jackson no. suit. All over. Mid call. All over. I'm Mid a meditator. Call. Not a problem now. <laughs> all over Duke swappy stats. Oh, we know oh, what happened. That enough. was enough. Oh. Oh. We know the swappy stats. <laughs> so now he's got no comms, no stats oh. on the screen, oh. no swampy stats. A short fuse. <laughs> and Hame's still calling. The true professional is, so he doesn't notice. The death stare that Duke gives him. <laughs> like, this would have knocked out normal oh. human beings. <laughs> and my man, Richo, just behind him, has got the giggles up. And you know, when you're in media, you don't giggle. No. You don't giggle. No. Never. And then the death stare went right, and it went towards Richo. And Richo quickly realised, well, this is a man who can king hit your best mate. And Robert Murphy, <laughs> I'm not going to go in. There, and then Duke's just sitting there, there and all a of a sudden he... Potential electrical hazard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was in occupational health and safety mode. Is the whole uh, coverage going to go to... But Richo... I heard his head was then on a swivel looking for Marky Carlin, who's put the coffee in front of him, and mate, there was a big blow What up. about Matthew Richardson? He laughed so much, <laughs> took his headphones off, and couldn't call for five minutes because <laughs> he's got that much enjoyment out of it. But I was cool, calm and collected, mate. That's I, what I heard, Duke, right, that's so. not what I heard. Oh, well, I think, actually, we've got a special caller on the line. <laughs> Funnily <laughs> enough, an eyewitness, we've we? got an eyewitness by the name of Hamish McLaughlin, who is a star on the Seven Network. He you joins the, us now. Tell the truth, Hamish. On Triple M you Football. You tell the truth. Uh, Mark, howdy, Hamish. Nice to speak to you. How are you? How are you? Always nice to hear your voice. Juddy, Das, Brownie. Hey. Um, I'm, I'm coming in late on this conversation. 
I just got a text message from Snorkel in the back row there and said, is any of this true? And I said, well, largely. And he said, can I get you on the line? I said, sure. So where are we at in terms of just this tale? Where, where are we picking up? Well, Hame, I told the story and I said that you're a complete professional calling the game. Sure. Didn't even look sideways at Duke, but accidentally pulled out the cord, which knocked over the coffee that Marky <laughs> Carlin put in front of Duke. that was probably just a little bit too full. <laughs> but there was then the blow up and the look that you didn't see from Duke, which was a death stare, which then went back to Richo, which then went to Marky Carlin. And then everybody started to think, OK, this is a man who's king hit Robert Murphy oh, before oh, for yeah, no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. And then chased yeah. Andy Marr yeah. for golf course. So <laughs> the, 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 sure. everybody was on edge. <laughs> Look, I think that's all largely pretty true. I think that the one piece that we're missing is the size of the coffee that I knocked over. So, <laughs> you know when you're at Starbucks in America and they say, would you like a large? And it comes out in sort of a 44-gallon drum. Duke was <laughs> yes. drinking something pretty similar. And the champ data stats weren't work working. There was no sound in our cans at all. And it was a pretty daunting experience. So I could only hear me commentating as if I was in a broom cupboard. I looked over at Richard and Darcy and pointed to the cans. I said, have you got any noise? And they said, no. I then looked down at the stats. And rather than it showing a Saturday night secure to hosting Port Adelaide game, it was like a 1997 Adelaide versus the Western Bulldogs prelim or something similar. So I was (laughs) like, well, these aren't working either. So I I go to grab the iPad. As I'm grabbing it, I'm leaning over because in front of Darcy, I grab the iPad and pull it, not realising the cord was attached. It then flicks over a coffee cup that is the same size as those Gatorade tubs that they pour over the coach in the (laughs) NFL. It then just starts running everywhere, but it's a slow trickle. But because we don't have anything to stop the trickle with, it just keeps coming towards me and coming towards me. And Richo sees it and looks over and then looks at Mark Cullen. Mark Cullen looks at Richo and they both then sort of start looking around if there's a curtain or something they can drag from uh, it's in situ position to stop the bleed. Das looks at me, and I haven't been looked at like that since I boxed up <laughs> up a whole heap of cows that weren't supposed to be boxed up from my father when I was about 12. And you, you know the glare, and you know that they're unhappy. You know that they're not angry with you. They're just disappointed. So then I look back at Duke thinking you might smile. He looked back and kept playing, uh, kept calling the guy. I then looked around and thought, can I grab his suit jacket, which is hanging on the back of his chair, and start to mop it all up? And then it just kept coming but then it started to get into all, all the technical equipment so then i'm hearing duke call but then only every second word is coming out i'm thinking oh no we're actually going to go amateur down hour. in cans it was amateur i was the worst sort of four or five or six minutes of all time and it was all because of my idiocy and i'd like to apologize to you duke and i apologize you, going forward Apology for anything that's going to happen in a similar vein yep. that was all my fault Hey, before we let you go, I think for the benefit of this show, what we really need to know is how Frosty was our man. Was he about to flip out or was he controlled? No, no. I mean, we always like to sort of put May on things. I've never known a more controlled guy, given we're on national television, about to go down all technical. There's actually Beautifully smoke said, coming I'm out, I'm of, out of... Beautifully said. Hey, that's not how no, we you roll purple. on the show. No, come on, Hayme. Let's just tell him how sorry. we roll. Cut him off. Yeah, no, sorry. Out of, 10, out, of 10, out of 10, Duke was as angry as I've ever seen him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Mark you. He, he kicked out and cracked the glass in the clubhouse. And Richo, I know, that's for a fact, still has a dead arm. But other than that, Here he was very, yeah, very yogury. Thanks, Hayme. We'll be watching you tomorrow night on Saturday Night Footy. Nice to speak to you as Hello. always, Hamish McLaughlin, yeah. the star of the seven. It was not the first time this happened. I do remember during COVID when you went the makeup remover and blew up at the makeup <laughs> oh, remover because you'd used the hand sanitizer wipes That's at right. the time and burnt your face off. And you gave a poor makeup girl a spray I'm gonna, there. I'm going to quote my mate uh, Chris Judd. Feedback's a gift, Howie. <laughs> Sometimes you have to deliver it with a bit of intent, Howie. That's how it works. Yeah, we judge Juddy's coming up, but we haven't seen our man for a while. I think it's just time to explore the world of Juddy and how he's going. Uh, firstly, the market's judge. How are you reading it? It's a very volatile situation at the moment. So if people are listening, this is not... Mm. Uh, what's the disclaimer? Financial advice. This is this is definitely not financial, financial advice. advice. You shouldn't get financial advice off an unemployed ex-footballer, Howard. No. But but if you look at the house that uh, Beck built, something's going right here. So what do you got for us? Markets are very tough and, and different to what we've seen over the last few years. So people should be careful out there. It's probably a time where boring businesses are going to do okay. Things like non-discretionary consumer, you know, supermarkets, utilities, really boring stocks. And I think resource stocks might come off in the short term, but I think they're probably not too bad. I think tech's still got a bit of a way to go in sell-off Howard, even though it's been smashed. Right. And crypto is 
like tech on steroids. So you'd think that'd be worse before it gets better. He's my mm. guess, Howard, but I am no good at short-term calls. And talk your book, your financial podcast. Oh, we've got a plug. <laughs> well, well, you need a plug because I saw the numbers the other day. How's it going? Oh. Going very well, thank you, Is Howard. It? Very engaged viewership. Right. And uh, they're a high customer acquisition type of customer, Guru. So going very well. Shooting the good. lights out. Good. Um, <laughs> Juddy, do you regret your position you took on Elon Musk many years ago? <laughs> you know what? In yeah. a way, Duke, it was a relief. It was a relief to finally get something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and if it, when you get to 30, 37, 38, and you haven't got anything wrong, it starts to get stressful. When's it going to happen? So I put my hand up, and I got something wrong. <laughs> he bought Twitter. He bought everything. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you make of that? Because that, that's fascinating. Yeah. What, why does the richest man on the planet go and buy Twitter? What, what makes sense of that? And how does he make money out of it? Well... I think you. I think he's going to charge companies a small fee to, to post. I think it would be interesting, the Web3 movement, Duke, where the user on these platforms actually gets more of a role and gets remunerated. If you send a tweet and it goes completely viral, I would have thought in the next generation of tech companies, you'll earn money from that. You currently oh. don't. The take rate of Twitter or Facebook is 100% those companies, zero the user. You would think that will evolve and that take rate will come down and the users will actually get paid a lot more for their content going forward. Property, we've just seen an interest rate rise. A lot of people own property out there like this one. I what don't about how we a... speak to him like he's sort of the new incarnation of David Koch? Which is... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Well, some, a lot of people do have mortgages, <laughs> unlike yourself, but <laughs> where do we see property going in the short and long term? Again, that's another thing I'm not an expert in, but I think But you'll property... give your advice anyway. Yeah, I will, Howard. Yeah. yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because Nathan asked the question. Okay. It's the least I could do. Okay. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it'll be soft. If I had to guess, I think it might come off 10, maybe even 15%. But I don't think it'll crash property. It's, all, it's, it's an asset that the government's going to do everything to underwrite, so it'll never get too soft. But it's gotten ahead of itself. I think it might just come off a little bit, 10%. And people, not a good time to over-leverage yourself, I wouldn't have thought. And how he uh, judge accurately predicted the, the previous housing he did, come yeah. off too, well in advance of it happening. He um, did. Judge, uh, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, it's a language that people don't understand. What, what's going on there? Again, that's more, that, is, now that is an area where Nate does no, have I'd, a bit of an I'd, edge. I'd, but I'd I, your look, I don't, I don't think uh, I wouldn't be comfortable investing in them as an investment, but I think what they represent in the future... I think will be wildly important. And if you look at the way freedom of speech is going, I know, Howard, you've had some issues here and things you haven't been allowed to talk about in the last couple of years. But you could see a world where people can't converse online as their own, uh, as themselves, because people can't debate uh, the idea they just attach to the person. You could see a world where you, you're only really able to have that discourse if you're doing it through someone who is anonymous, through an, an NFT-type profile picture. What I could sort of see issues is Howard yet? Well, he wasn't allowed to talk about the vaccine in the last no, we couple of years, were you? No, we I, don't, I don't know we what weren't. else is on the list that you're not allowed to talk about this year. No, House, a I'm, company I'm not... directive. We weren't allowed to talk nev- negatively about the vaccination process. I think was, was the that a company directive. Really? I think oh, it was. Geez, I, I didn't get that. that, 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 that memo. I didn't want to bring that. I didn't. Yeah. That would be awkward for you. More importantly, are you buying the blues? Yes. Are you buying the blues? Yes, I am. The blues are great. Are you excited? Yes. Are you talking finals? Yeah, I think they will make finals. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they. I don't know if they'll be top four. But um, I think that five to eight bracket, you know, particularly if they're able to win this week, I think uh, they're looking good and they've got some good depth all of a sudden. Is it a premiership list? Do you still go down to the club? Oh, I haven't been to the club for a while. I've been going to a few of the games, Noodles. I think it, yeah, I think this is the nucleus of a, of a premiership list, Howard. Ooh. What do you think? I think it is. I think, what I think, you're the expert as to who will win games. I like to, as a commentator, you go along and you want to be entertained. If I commentate Carlton, I'm entertained. Like the weedering down the back does his thing. The midfield's exciting. Jack Martin's my favourite player. And then the big boys up forward, their bums on seats Are you operators. putting any weight into the fact that Juddy not on the board has been well, There's been a, a definite positive. upswing. <laughs> there's been a massive upswing. And I didn't want to go with that. He, he, he talked about the first time he'd made a mistake. He obviously forgot his three years <laughs> on a board. Full stop. He just wiped that from the hard drive. He, he analyses the data. That's just the that's data right. that's out but there. But again, I hate to bring interest. it up, but he was right on the training wheels. Again, he got <laughs> He for the training wheel right. comment, yep. and he's proven to be right. You get someone senior in, Michael yep. Voss, all of a sudden they're talking premierships down at yeah, Carlton no, he, again. He looks very awkward about this, so you need to ask him a direct question all about that. All taken out of context, that, Nate. <laughs> all <laughs> taken out of context. All right, whoop-de-doop, it might be time for... <laughs> in the world of AFL.
There is one modern day player that rises above all else. I'd be happy to put my name up as the chairman. Whose opinions and judgments we respect. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. The situations are real. The verdicts are final. This is Judge Juddy. Yeah, just before you speak, you've been out of the media for two years. <laughs> The world has become a much different place <laughs> to when you were last yeah. on air. We are now woke with a capital W. <laughs> Any group anywhere on the planet that you say anything offensive uh, about yeah. will land <laughs> us on the front page of the paper tomorrow. And you so got that, quoted, that's your disclaimer. You got quoted as recently as last week on something you said uh, on a telephone to us last Friday. So, oh, so be careful, please. It's, it's, you know what makes it harder? It's harder to get the fake laughs now. Because <laughs> how it's analysing, am I allowed to smirk at this? Or is this to get me in trouble? <laughs> Get your hand on that dump button, Juddy. <laughs> off you go. All right, so we've, we've got two. How do you, you yes. come to with that? Well, it's got it a, we've got a, a positive about. and a negative, and okay. they're both political, and I won't apologise for that. Okay. <laughs> the positive one this week is to the builders, all right? Those building a better future. Yep. And I probably put myself in that break. But <laughs> that's not important. <laughs> and, but before you say what you're going to improve, you've got to. You've got to articulate what the problem is. Yes, of course you do. And this election is a big problem. Every four years we've got to go through the theatre of watching the political leaders at the fish market or playing pool or pretending to have a beer. A beer at or the pub. Playing the ukulele. I mean, I'm watching these two, Duke. These two are the only two in Australia working less than me. <laughs> <laughs> Any media opportunity, I'd like to see them in front of three or four computer screens. Get a Bloomberg terminal for Albo so he might remember some financial yeah. data. I don't want to see him out and about having fun. Is there any danger? So then I thought, how can we make it better, Guru? Yes, what did you come up with? And I thought, who's got a bit of spare capacity yep. on their hands? And to me, I thought Greta Thornburg. <laughs> you know, COVID's been hard for Greta. She was coming like a freight train. She was yelling at everyone. Yep. Then all of a sudden, COVID came and she's been knocked off a pedestal, but she's got some capacity. Just, just for those listening that aren't familiar with Greta's uh, work, she's a uh, female Swedish uh, activist who's put, put climate change on the she agenda has, in an has. extraordinary way, uh, Juddy. That's and you guys, have, you've heard of the metaverse, Howard? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to build the Gretaverse. <laughs> okay. And oh I'm thinking we get, we get five or six 16-year-olds <laughs> around the world. And I've, I've spoken to independent experts on this. Yes. 16, <laughs> 16 is about the right age to govern right. and to lead. And we're going to get five or six 16-year-olds to govern all countries. <laughs> and we don't have to put up with it every four years. We don't need these silly elections. We don't have to go through the theatre. You've got to listen to the kids, Howard. Yep. We'll get the Young Emerging Leaders Program yep. for 10, 11-year-olds. We're going to book Oscar in. <laughs> the Penguin can come in. The Little Penguin. Duke's Duke, 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 they're not invited. No. Because, uh, I'm not sure if Duke's aligned to the, uh, the Greta-verse. <laughs> but I think it solves a lot of problems. I think it's going to make the world a better place. And uh, I'm going to have a back, a back office role, Howard. Right. They're not going to take any fees. You know, same as Triple M. They'll cover expenses. But <laughs> expenses. No actual wages. And um, I'm pretty excited about it. So, so the... The positive one this week is to the builders. I like mm. it. And I love the Greta, Greta Bird. I, I think that'll take over. But with the yin, there's a yang. There's always a negative, yeah. unfortunately. unfortunately. And, it, and it, it is in this room. Oh, no. And it gives me no pleasure in this one. It, it's fun. Albert Camus is a French philosopher. You'd probably be familiar with it. He, it is saying, Nate, that all men want to become gangsters. Those that don't have the courage become politicians. <laughs> all right? And there's some truth to that. <laughs> but if there's one thing worse than a politician, it's a sycophant. To a politician, Howard, and right. it's come across my desk yep. that one of our very own, yep. Ooh. the Ooh. Duke, Ooh. has a board up in his front garden oh. like one of those political oh. nuffies. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like no. one of those nuffies. Oh. Oh. I'd like some evidence to be produced of that. Uh, <laughs> is yeah, this or is this not true, Duke? It, very close to the truth. <laughs> very close to the truth. But, but when you either get engaged in the process or you stay out of the process. Well, so who's on the say, board? I'm, I'm it wouldn't be Dan the, Andrews, would it? I know that. No, I'm in the uh, electorate of Kuyong. <laughs> Is it Joshi? Uh, there's a fairly uh, fierce uh, contest well, going uh, on there. Who are you pushing um, for, Duke? Well, what are you telling Spit other people what to think, Duke? Uh, they I'm can not, think for themselves. I'm, I'm just declaring my hand. Josh, who's uh, on the board? Jody. Well, Josh Friedman. And, and right. to be honest, Josh is the only one I actually like out of both parties. But to have the Duke. You know, this was a... Duke was a hard man. He was. Was playing. You always yeah. knew who he was. There was a elbow in the back of your head. Or, I mean, Robert Murphy knows. 
<laughs> what he's become reduced to is working class Jude. Getting wasn't ready for a handout from the libs, and <laughs> it's just very messy. Everyone's got a prize in the front yard. <laughs> do you get paid to work those do you get paid? Is there an earn somewhere? Oh, yes, oh, pay it, off. It's, it's uh, an extraordinary time, as Juddy said. It's a certain. Uh, <laughs> he's uncertain getting paid. Time. Oh, he's, he's getting paid. paid. So he's want, getting paid to put Josh's board up. Oh my! I've heard it all. You want quality people who are senior people around, and occasionally you just got to stand up and, and, and own something out. So, so do you put, do you, do you give Johnny's him a call? Look at <laughs> look at, I get no pleasure in this. This <laughs> hurts me as look much as happy. This Johnny, is a man sorry. I looked up to. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, you, you know how it works. Do, do, does Das contact the party and say there's uh, real estate uh, space uh, or does it come back? Rotten. How does it work? It's a prominent location. I thought you had to you have run this past Beck as well. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Brownie, Jeez. as a it, former the, representative of the of the working class club, yeah. the Western Bulldogs, yeah. to have a Josh Frydenberg well, this is the man that got out of a helicopter at a... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a good that's point. That's, that's, that's when it went downhill. That's yeah. when it went downhill. It's, it's, the that's, clubs yeah. as well. Yeah. Very Actually, aligned to I'm my values, actually. I'm surprised I was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised this didn't come across your desk earlier. Oh, you know, what are you like doing all week? He's got good mail. For it. He's <laughs> got good mail. The judge. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm very no, comfortable with this that. This reflects poorly on Sam down at the club. I think. What, what, <laughs> the question is, what are you doing all week? You're, you're the man. <laughs> to have this time. I'm building the Gretaverse, mate. Right. That's what I'm doing. Right. Right. So, I had no so, idea where you were going to go with that when you said that. But yeah, no, I like it. Right, that's extraordinary. Well done, Judge. Thank you. You stayed on air.